good afternoon one and all learned organizers members of the international advisory committee of seventh conference of the indo pacific academy of forensic nursing science 2021 and theme is very apt advancement of forensic nursing science and practice at the outset i thank i'm um, namaskar at the outset i'm very much thankful to the respected dr gaur rakesh goria for providing this opportunity to speak on the medico legal aspects in nursing he is very proactive member of uh, forensic science on 29th of february we uh, 2020 we had a conference national level conference at krishna institute of medical sciences deemed to be in uh, university uh, which is which was on forensic science in healthcare practice and it was an interdisciplinary conference which was held in karad maharashtra india i have immense pleasure to talk on this medical legal aspects in nursing the purpose is very clear to practice to promote the positive change in medical legal management uh, for the detainees asylum speakers seekers mental disorders living and deceased persons to prevent the victimization and reduce the fear of crime forensic nursing nursing process is an art and science of nursing and medical legal clinical skills are very important to provide the quality care to the survivors offenders of the violent crimes and once again i thank from my core of heart to write to allow us to provide the opportunity to write our own destiny with the power of forensic science knowledge wisdom and uh, power of technology for the dr akesh goria eminent speakers from the since morning and uh, chairpersons honorable chairpersons dr yogendra bansal and dr mahmud masood maksud i have uh, this is the where exactly we are situated in india maharashtra which is most populous center and this is the university where the last year we have we had a conference conducted on the forensic science so this already a medical legal aspects in nursing are very important we are sure that the now healthcare professionals are uh, we are now aware that healthcare professionals are facing the challenges in the practicing forensic science due to increased burden of cyber crimes biological terrorism misuse of freedom in social media and forensic sciences is much needed and we are in infancy and lifelong learner for this forensic sciences in this year indian nursing council has revised the syllabus in the forensic science and they have given special weightage and emphasis on the forensic nursing science uh, so this um, in this our institution krishna institution we have a 700 students uh, for this one so uh, my request of all the members of this forum so the, <coughs> we wanted to start forensic nursing science in department at the krishna institute of nursing science medical sciences deemed to be university and we would like to uh, collaborate for this uh, forensic sciences and take up these challenges for the quality care so this will be my uh, this is my humble request humble submission to all of you members of this forum health care provided provider play, play very important role in and the nurses are the backbone of health care system forensic nursing is the application of science nursing science to public and legal proceedings and the nurses responsibility and accountability in the legal aspects is very much increased nurses responsibility is increased due to misuse of the social media increased uh, road traffic accidents biological ter uh, terrorism and challenges related to it, it like uh, organophosphorus uh, poisoning and like homicidal suicides Uh, suicides imbalance between intelligent coefficient spiritual coefficient and emotional coefficient quotient sorry imbalance between the again the violence of intimate partners domestic violence psychosocial psycho psychological injuries elder abuse negligence human trafficking and medical le legal aspect is a major concern and this is I'm sorry so what are the main important legal aspects and what are the functions of law and how it is useful to the nurses because of the 
framework, right framework for the nursing actions. So what nursing actions we are performing, the nursing procedures in the care hospital for the patient quality care. So if that provides the law, provides the framework for the nursing actions and differentiate the nurse's responsibility as we have a different cadres in the nursing, like auxiliary nursing, general nursing, diploma nursing, degree nursing, postgraduate nurses, PhD nurses, MP nurses, even for the service side and education side, and we have integration for the service and edu education and service. So it differentiates the nurses' responsibilities. So law protects the nurses. It is a safeguard and boundaries of independent nursing action. So which are those boundaries for the independent nursing? Still India, in India, independent nursing is not uh, so far practiced. The, there are some boundaries like, uh, like uh, nurse practitioners course. Recently uh, in Indian Nursing Council, nurse practitioners course is started uh, in critical care, midwifery, and primary health care, but there are the boundaries. They cannot practice independent like states and uh, other states, like states like America. We don't we don't perform in the independent competencies. It, it is interdependent. In consultation with the physician, surgeon, we conduct the activities, and so that is why law protects. But maintaining the standards of nursing practice, it's very very important. Uh, task and this law helps and this is the main function of law because maintaining the standards in uh, nursing practice we have a separate guidelines for the nursing standards for the practicing the uh, this one but interdependent as an interdependent profession we have to be dependent on the physician and protocols institutional protocols uh, of the institution where we practice so what happened with the, what is important law for the nurses? They take a responsibility as a, with the accountability and the number of advanced practice nurses are increased. They assist in the decision-making process, protection of nursing practice and identification of risk of liabilities where we can, we know we are very well all over India, very well aware about the Aruna Sharma, Shanbak's case. She had raped by the ward boy. And the, she was 36. I would like to share that important incidence and the risk of liabilities. 36 years she was in the coma in the KM hospital. And uh, uh, last, uh, last uh, five years back, she has been, uh, she, there was an issue like uh, uh, euthanasia regarding euthanasia has been, but it is not permitted in India. She was 36 years in the coma because of uh, this, uh, we were failed to identify the risk in time. So what are the effects on law of nursing practice? Who is the client? Nurses, whenever patient enters in the emergency area, there are certain, line, certain guidelines to handle the patient. What is the age of, uh, suppose the patient comes with the mass casualties, then the, she can, nurses with the triage principle, she can identify the, what, is, what is the level of, what is the, who is requiring the treatment, what is the age of the patient, who is at life-threatening situation, she has to categorize and the triage principle she is following. And many of the area, since we are in the rural area, we are facing many challenges like when one patient, uh, I, I can share the one small incidents that the road traffic accident has happened and young boys, 18-year boy was unconscious, he was in a uh, gasping situation when uh, members of Rotary Club, International Rotary Club, they had finished their meeting and they were bringing the patient to the hospital in the rural area, uh, not in the institution. It's a, a small dispensary and they have refused treatment uh, to give the treatment to that patient. 18 years boy was in the gasping situations and we were witnessing that situation that those who are handling the patient, they were not knowing the legal Supreme Court's guidelines. He was not ready to take up the patient and patient was in a life-threatening situation, then we take the further higher centers and that patient was treated. So this is the effect of law if this person would have been known and afterwards that patient was survived with the uh, craniotomy has been performed. With the, he was met with an accident, head injury. Patient survives, got well. But because of ignorance of this law, that patient would have been suffered because of this uh, ignorance in the law. So in rural area, still so many challenges we are facing in the emergency situations, like those who wanted to do some good, uh, good Samaritan acts, they are also facing the challenges. So forensic science is much, much needed in uh, rural areas, specifically in A-class cities, metro class. It is, uh, it is very good to handle. People are aware with the law, what is the law and uh, what is awareness. So uh, in hospital, like uh, tertiary care hospital, in primary level hospitals, we 
are facing these challenges like the use of uh, restraints. Patient comes with a head injury, patient comes with a rowdiness and how to use the restraints. And uh, this, uh, if this person knows the law properly, she will explain, nurse will explain the patient's families regarding the restraints, how useful or not useful. So this is about the restraints and dying patient's wishes. Sometimes patient wants to talk something so law helps uh, the uh, last dying uh, rights are there for the patient. And even the maintaining the confidentiality, I can share the one example when we are performing screening with the uh, handheld devices when we go for the screening in this uh, rural area. So confidentiality, people are having different types of meds. She has gone for screening, something happened to her. Like uh, India is uh, like uh, conservative and very, ladies are very shy. So confidentiality has to be maintained what we are screening and where we are screening. So we are going to uh, house to house and screening for the earliest detection of the breast cancer with the, uh, using the artificial intelligence. So, and again, the, this, uh, so this law helps us for the nurses uh, for the, and then we can maintain the confidentiality and privacy also. And a proper documentation is required in nursing profession in regard to the uh, research, administration, and even education, academics. Incidental reports are very important, incident reports, and the law protects us and each and then uh, here also I can share the report, uh, share the one incidents when I was working in the hospital as OT nurse, as a staff nurse, and one of the patient came with the anaphylactic reaction. Uh, and uh, certainly it, it was very simple antibite and had a vasovagal shock and nobody knows why he had sudden vasovagal shock and he brought to the hospital and patient was taken for the emergency all the management they have done it and uh, what was in sudden then after stabilization patient was become all right it was uh, anaphylactic shock but there was something uh, incident report was uh, that informer told about the proper history what antibite simple antibite and taking coffin and uh, this might have happened. I'm not sure that what has happened, but that incident she has told that coffee, uh, missed, uh, you know, that cap after cap drinking of the coffee, and he had a simple ant bites, and he had developed some vasovagal shock. But incident reporting was very clear, so doctors were able to treat the patient. So incident report that time that nurse was handled that case and proper reporting has been happened. And this is the law. If somebody knows, otherwise there will be some Yes. So medical legal issues these are very important uh, issues because we are facing now and then medical legal incidents now in this during this pandemic, the, the ventilators were not available at the, so many ventilators that were not available. So which patient has to be removed, then nurse has to know the patient activity tools properly, then only she can handle the medical legal uh, cases, the people were with the myths in the villages, in the tribal areas, people were not allowing nurses and the, uh, handling the cases, like they were not allowing the uh, nurses to come to home uh, with uh, this, uh, the, when they are using the PPE kit and all these things. So this myths and also this, these are the issues. So uh, ventilators were not available at a time. Many patients used to come, somebody were in the ambulance and somebody is in the, on the road. They were waiting for the, this one. So it, this issues, with the law, proper knowledge of the law, medical legal aspects in nursing, one can handle the patient with the confidence and patient can be survived. But when it happens, the legality should be followed in physical examination. Many patient comes, uh, like female patient comes for the abdominal pain and whenever doctors are checking, nurse, female nurse should be there for the um, privacy and uh, with the, otherwise uh, only male doctor can be allowed in the in this uh, rural area it happens that sometimes sagging of the breast and she sometimes doctor may touch so this these are the issues again comes and again complaint against doctor or nurse happens so always there should be a, there there are issues so she should have a proper knowledge about the issues and whenever uh, <coughs> cases comes with the burns Circums, uh, patient burns like some suicidal attempts. She come, uh, patient comes with the organophosphorus poisoning. Nurses has uh, to perform biggest role whenever patient comes with the corrosive poison. She has to collect. She has to have a proper knowledge about how to collect the uh, that uh, whatever he has in consumed uh, the 
compound which can, that she has to preserve, she has to send to the forensics uh, department for the which or the substance he or she has taken in case of non-corrosive poison. She has to uh, gastric lavage after giving this gastric lavage, what is patient's name? If there are some food poison patient comes, she has to do all this, uh, handle the cases in a proper way. In accident cases, many of the patient comes with the unnatural accidents. So she has to handle the cases. She has to know the medical legal aspects. In the MLC cases, where are the where patient has come with the conscious patient, unconscious patient, relatives are there, not they are not there when ornaments, when documents, she has to, or he has to, as a nurse, he has to handle it to the proper departments and uh, take uh, documentation is very important in medical legal cases, organophosphorus poison cases, accident cases, and even suspected evidence of criminal abortions, sexual assault. So uh, in the Supreme Court, as everybody is aware that Supreme Court has uh, guidelines and every university and every educational institution has a, is following the Vishaka guidelines for the prevention of sexual assault and uh, internal complaint and committees are there to uh, complaint for the complaint for any sexual aspect, aspect assault or suspected assault. Uh, there is a committee so they can go and grievance redress and can be done in that committee. And that is uh, honorable prime minister has uh, announced okay, there each and every tertiary care hospital should have a, a crisis intervention center so that this cases will be handled within a priority and priority will be the main concern for this handling this type of cases in unconscious patient again there is a she has to see what kind of patient or unconscious why he is unconscious what are the reasons if relatives are there she has to ask the history or doctor has doctor there is a team for this unconscious patient in casualty or triage they will have to ask the history about uh, if patients relatives are available or not available they have to see the information from other signs and symptoms parameters they will have to diagnose the patient so handling the medical legal patients are very, very important for the nurses. Again, this uh, eminent speaker has uh, spoken about these thoughts, intentional thoughts and unintentional thoughts. So I'll skip these topics. Negligence at uh, unintentional thoughts, like a negligence is very, very uh, bad part. Uh, from the nurse's side or healthcare provider side. A negligence, we can give the example if the patient comes in the hospital and uh, when I have seen in the a patient, patient was with the hypothermia, a patient was operated for polycystic coming. He had a post-operative uh, in the bed and he had hypothermia and her oxygen level was SpO2 was very down. And uh, then uh, doctors were thinking about different parameters, but there was a negligence from side that patient had a common cold and it was thick mucus. And that is why that uh, oxygen was not going properly. Nasal, nasal prongs were blocked and that is one kind of negligence. And then suddenly after removing the nasal prongs, SpO2 saturation was good. So this kind of negligence is not tolerated in any uh, healthcare system. So this kind of unintentional thoughts can happen. Even malpractices in this corona time, uh, malpractices has happened for the remdesivir and all this in kind of uh, in this pandemic situation. So malpractices are uh, happen unintentionally mal malpractices. Sometimes patient may not uh, may not uh, this uh, touch to the patient with the corona with the fear of uh, corona. So this has happened during this pandemic. So. There are legal safeguards for the nurses. Uh, these are very uh, caring, important. So uh, with these legal safeguards for nurses, nurses are uh, live, uh, nurses may live happily with his or, his or her professional life. She can, whenever patient comes, she has a right to take informed consent, even doctors and uh, doctors informed consent, written, con written consent for the operation or uh, any other chemotherapy then she can see the what are the physical uh, physician's order or surgeon's doctor orders for the patient for the treatment, which chemotherapy should be given or which medication should be given, what kind of diagnosis. She has a right to see his case paper or her patient's case paper, then write documentation. 
she has to while documenting while medic giving the medication she has to observe the rights of the patient root of right root of the patient right age of the patient right name of the patient expiry date of that medication that she has to she see and documentation in all aspect like progress of the patient in any case of research uh, with the permission consent of the pay that patient then if it is not happened in a proper way or uh, within a framework she has to go for the collective bargaining and then she has to report the uh, incidents for the patient's quality care and patient's uh, progress health progress so these are the different laws are covered by eminent speaker so these are the again medical legal uh, ethical issues consent and capacity one has to give the consent for the written consent or one can refuse the treatment patient can refuse the treatment they have a patient's rights are there they can refuse the treatment at any time or they can accept the treatment with the proper explanation by the nursing whatever procedure she is performing or treatment she is performing healthcare providers are performing any treatment they will have to explain the patient properly and they have a full right as to reject or accept the treatment then confidentiality should be maintained by the by the healthcare providers uh, and use of prescriptions and refusal of alternative medicine alternative medicine if patients are now doctors like uh, the medical shopping they say many doctors many pathies they are following homeopathy this pandemic time we have observed homeopathy allopathy siddha unani some different pathies they are a patient sap coming with that then nurse is confused which medication should be given sometimes patient may refuse this i don't want this treatment this i have taken so adverse reactions may happen so that time uh, legal safeguards uh, will protect the nurse to practice profession faithfully so there are some uh, nursing practice act in india as per that act indian nursing council has given the minimum standards and deemed universities uh, they can practice autonomy and they can uh, for the academy for example academic they have increased the curriculum right now they have uh, revised the curriculum like forensic nursing and that more emphasis is given so a grade of one uh, a plus double plus universities can implement the syllabus grade two university can have that syllabus they can include the curriculum in the this one nursing curriculum even other curriculum also they can increase the forensic uh, revise the syllabus and can add can be added emergency modules like forensic nursing nursing practice acts in in india in other countries like states they have independent practice in india they they can't practice independently there are some certain as they will have to follow the institutional protocols for the st and standard operating procedures in the institution for the performing the nursing procedures so there are issues so uh, the ethical principles are guiding principles like truthfulness loyalty honesty irrespective of their honesty uh, communicating in the truth in the word like and uh, withholding the information from the client which information should be withhold from children or their small if they are legal guardian she has to tell them she should be nurse should be honest and she should be truthful to the her profession and her commitments regarding the nursing procedures justice it's a fair and equal justice she has to give to the patient fidelity she should be loyal towards the care or she should not discriminate at the age sex or creed caste she should not discriminate the patients and there are the bioethical issues also uh, regarding this uh, giving the pills for example birth control pills again some family members will say no should not be given then this issues also again uh, facing then mercy killing like uh, Oh, I have shared the example of Dr. Uh, Miss uh, Aruna Shanbag. She was a nurse and euthanasia. So in India, this mercy killing is not that extent. It is allowed or uh, uh, euthanasia. So this is about the um, by ethical principles. And so this ethical principles health all health care must provide. In conclusion, I can say uh, all the this medical legal aspects are very very important. 
and we are in infancy lifelong learners as a profession so this forum of this forensic internet asia pacific forum will help to uh, glorify this uh, nursing in and uh, collaborations will have many collaborations for this forensic nursing and will gain the knowledge and uh, nurses will be immensely benefited with this forensic nursing science i'm very much thankful to the organizers doctor organizer dr rakesh kuria dr yoginder and dr mehmood uh, for uh, uh, if i have any uh, suggestions of, uh, i'm uh, fully accept the, i will fully accept the suggestions thank you for patient listening and thank you very much for the giving me chance to present medical legal aspects in nursing